Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the Z9 autofocus, this time the firmware 2.0 update, a couple of the changes that went into it and something that is actually very, very beneficial. We're gonna talk about it right after this. I got into a little bit of a wormhole here. So I started with what I thought was gonna be just the Nikon Z9 for songbirds. Here are the problems with autofocus. Here's a solution or some, some tips to help you with it. Most of those were built around memory recall. So I make a video, memory recall on your lens may help you to, to pull back the focus with the issue being that it, it focuses beyond the subject and it won't pull back. A common issue to most mirrorless systems uh, by the way, some interesting comments that I read. I'm not very familiar with Olympus, but a lot of people have said that the Olympus system handles this better than others. I do not know if that's true. If you have information on that, put it down in the comments. I am very curious about that. But my Canon R5 users experience this for sure. Every Nikon Z9 user or every Nikon mirrorless system user has experienced this. And then I want to do a follow-up with firmware. I get a lot of questions about the firmware. Will firmware 2.0 address this? It's not in the release notes, but maybe, you know, there's a miracle. It's going to improve it. I didn't see any improvement. I download, download firmware 2.0 and I specifically just test that part of it. Uh, 2.0, by the way, is very video intensive, but there are some still adjustments uh, for still photography. There are some adjustments in there. And in the release notes, I see kind of this thing that really caught my eye, which is, can we pre-program a button basically to do what the lens recall button does out here? So if I'm shooting out here, lens recall out here with the buttons, I can, I can press those buttons and it will bring it back to maybe a minimum focus or a closer focus so I can acquire focus. I covered that in the second video I did of this series. So it's kind of like a three-part uh, series right now. So now Nikon is going to give us the option to program other function buttons. So on my, I'll pull up my Z9. I got the 70 to 200 on here because it's just small and nimble. But could I program these buttons up here? So now that, if I could program one of these buttons to recall the lens, rather than rely on the lens buttons up here, especially with a 400 or a 600 where I'm out here on a tripod, might not be convenient, but that would be, that would be really neat. And could I quickly program it to save the location that I want to shoot at and recall it? And in the release notes, it's there. And I'm thinking, oh, this is great. Now they've, they've not solved the issue of focusing, but they've given us a very powerful tool to deal with it, a quick tool that can be adjusted. Now, one of the great things about the Z9 and most mirrorless systems is we've got a lot of, of uh, variability, a lot of customization. We can program these function buttons to do a lot of different features. So you're gonna give up some versatility. You're gonna give up those function buttons should you choose to use this. But, and I'll just back up, the function one button, that top button is almost always, I'll say this on YouTube, an oh shit button. It's, it's like something moves real quick and I need to change what I'm doing. So maybe my focus points open up and I increase my shutter speed because the subject has now moved. So when a bird's perched and then it flies quickly, this may be the kind of but button that I would assign to a bird's in flight mode to quickly change there. Now, function two and three, I just told you, I had, I had assigned them to other things, but I'm gonna try this and see how it works. So function three to quickly save the place and function two to recall where it's at. And this is where you find them in the, in the custom settings menu. They're right down there. You could see the options. You just assign them as you would with any of these other customizations. And it's pretty easy to do. I got my 400 and I'm excited about this feature. I got my setup, my Songbird setup, the 402.8 Z9. And I'm gonna set these buttons up and it doesn't work. I'm like, oh, okay, let me go through. Some more, I, I spent 15 or 20 minutes. I'm reading the release notes. I'm looking online. There's really not much because it's a new firmware update. Nobody's really talking about it. I put the 300 millimeter lens on there. I, I'm, it's not working. I put the, I put a smaller lens. I think I got a 17 to 35 or something like that. These are all F mount lenses. I'm thinking, I'm reading the release notes wrong. I put the camera down. I'm like, I'll get to it tomorrow. So now today I get up, I look at it again. I'm looking online, there's nothing. Let me try the 70 to 200. A 7200 works right away. So in the release notes, I did not see this, by the way. If it's in there, I could have missed it. They mentioned some other functions that are only available for the 70 to 200. But my guess is, this is my guess, this is only working right now with Z mount lenses. So probably the 800, the 400, 2.8, the 100 to 400, uh, and the 70 to 200, whatever else is out there. But those are primarily what you're using for wildlife. 
I think it only works for those. So while it, and I don't, I can't quite get my, my head around why it wouldn't work for the other lenses and only for these. By the way, a couple things, these newer uh, Z-mount lenses have firmware updates. The F to, F to Z adapter has firmware that also is updated. The firmware for the FTZ adapter did not update. I am praying that that will do this, um, that will allow this feature to be used. But right now it appears, and if I am wrong, please correct me down in the comments or send me a message because I would really love to use this feature on my 402.8. I can't shoot songbirds with a 70 to 200. It's just, it's not enough, it's not enough reach. But let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about this, but it appears as though it's only going to work and the only Z-mount lens I have right now to test that with was the 70 to 200. I record with my 40 millimeter Z-mount and that's all I have. I have not upgraded my F-mount lenses yet. Uh, I do not do this as a full-time profession. This is a part-time uh, semi-professional thing, but I, I just can't, I can't justify going from my old 402.8 to the Z-mount uh, uh, 402.8, especially if I'm looking at that 800, which is kind of out on my radar. So. That's, that's the short and skinny. Now, let me take you through the lens real quick. And I'm actually gonna show you how I set this up and how it worked, and it worked very, very well. Okay, so here we are through the lens. Don't worry about any of the settings. I, I literally was just testing this focus. Notice I'm focusing here. Now watch what happens and I'll pause it right there. Okay, so you see that focus. It's saving that focus point. Uh, I will take a small moment to share my love of native plants. What you're looking at is um, a species of woodland flocks. I encourage everybody to get into um, native plants. I think if we're wildlife photographers, bird photographers, we should be interested in what happens around us and the environments that we create. I have a massive um, restoration project on my property that I'm doing with native plants. So this is a, a beautiful species of flocks. Now, I've established the focus point, so I've saved it. And again, on my setup, I used function three. You may not need to commit a major button to this. So maybe there's another function, a function button that you want to assign to this and keep one of those other, I call those the big three. It's the, you know, one, two, and three are kind of where you, these fingers are. Um, but I would suggest the recall button being an easy place to get to. So, you know, saving the focus in a, in a shoot, you're probably going to only save it once, I'm guessing, but we'll see. Now. I'm going to play this. So I've set the focus on the, the flocks here. I'm going to go to a different species of flocks. This is a uh, moss flocks or creeping flocks. And now I come back and you can see, watch, I'll do it again. So there, now I'm going to press the button. I'm not focusing. So let me stop. I'm not focusing with the shutter release or the back button focus. The focus here was achieved using that quick retrieval. So I'm using the focus recall to get that focus. You also see those red dots, that's uh, uh, like um, a peaking mode, mode that just kind of shows you what's in focus. So those are the areas that are in focus. So disregard the red dots are gonna show up from now, now and again. But again, I'm just gonna show you again there, and that's the retrieval. That's that focus recall using the function buttons that were pre-programmed. I'll do it over here just to exaggerate the point. I set the focus, that is, uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what plant it is. It's Golden Alexander, a wonderful PA native, um, an early bloomer. These are my early bloomers, so you get to see my early flowers. Now I've established the focus point on that Golden Alexander. I'm going to go here. I'm going to focus using the focus button. And now I'm going to recall focus over here using the recall button. And there it is. It's getting me back into that zone very quickly. Here's the advantage for songbirds. If it's struggling to focus quick, I can easily, instead of reaching out for the lens and fumbling to find that button, especially if you're on a tripod or you got other things there, it's not, a lens coat is covering it sometimes. This is just so, so, so easy. So it's wonderful. It's a wonderful addition. Thank you, Nikon. I love this. I love it. Am I wrong that it's only for Z-mount lenses? It does not say this. It mentions other things that are specifically for the 70 to 200. It mentions um, some of the, the other features, but it did not specifically mention this as only a Z-mount feature. If anybody knows the answer to this, please let me know. I got to know, can my F-mount lens do this? Has anybody done this successfully? Because if you have, please send me a message. I want to get this done. All right, that's the video for today. I hope you're enjoying the series. I, I got to tell you real quick before I log off, I don't do a lot of gear and software videos. 
Uh, you'll see some videos back on Topaz and Topaz Denoise. It's a product I believe in. I love it. Um, so I believe in that product, but I try not to go heavy on that. I, I really do think that, that sometimes we get hyper-focused on gear and buttons, and, and we think that that's going to make great wildlife photography. I, I can tell you, if you've got a Z9 or a Z6 II or a D500 or a D850, these are all great cameras, all of them. What will make you a better wildlife photographer, and what I've tried to show on this channel for a long time, I'm coming up on three years on this channel, is what goes on behind the lens is the most important thing. I may do more gear related videos in the future. I'm doing a lot of reviews. I've got some gimbals over here. I'm doing a review on all of that. It matters. People like these videos, but what makes you a great wildlife photographer? Patience in the field observing behavior, understanding light, having an artistic eye, composition. Those are the things, those are the things that make you a great wildlife photographer. So please don't let the gear take away from that. Focus on being a great wildlife photographer first and use these tools and fine tune them to help you out. Yes, you're gonna get some shots maybe because the buttons were, were set the right way or the focus was set a certain way. You may get a couple extra shots, but what's gonna build your, your your gallery or, or fill out your website or sell your prints is a consistent dedication to the craft. So I'm going to leave you with that today. I always thank you for your support. Short video today. Hope you found it entertaining. I want lots of comments on this one. Please let me know how I'm doing with this. Am I right or am I wrong on this? Uh, let me know and uh, we'll continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.